Yeah, hello everybody. Yeah, we are in to a real deal of session with the Teacherton uh, Conference, 24 hour online global conference. So uh, we just had Kirsten Duart spoke, uh, spoke recently, and, and uh, it was really a fun time. You could actually still check up our session online. But now we're supposed to have Alice in Apsi right now, but uh, one reason or the other, life happens. So she had, she's, she had not been able to make it yet. So but we wanted to uh, go on straight to Miko Wagstaff. Um, and you're going to be getting something, we're going to be getting Googly with Miko's uh, presentation. So uh, we'll, we'll bring that up in a moment. Yeah, um, we are still live here at the 24-hour global conference. And guess what? We still have a lot of fantastic speakers that you will still have on the show today. Oh, yeah, it's a show anyway. So and it's a learning show. So uh, you, you're still, um, we're, you're going to have Shamal Majumda, I'm a favorite one of, I mean, the former uh, Unibok, uh, Ed, UNESCO Unibok Ed, um, recently retired from that position. Then we have uh, Dr. Nathan Langrad uh, of We Video, is the Chief uh, Learning Officer of We Video. Uh, we have Jerry Henley. Yeah, do I have been mentioning uh, all male folks, but right now I'm gonna talk about the female folks. Jenny Majera, yeah, the global head. Uh, I, I, she's a global head of uh, engagement at Google for Education. Yeah, and we have Monica Bonds, the class tech tip uh, lady. Yeah, and if you have not watched uh, the edition we had with Lena Bakshi, uh, just you, you can. Well, if you have some bit of time, uh, go to our website at teacherzonenetwork.com, teacherzonenetwork.com. Then you go to our uh, um, other presentation, another menu presentation, you're going to see Lena Bachi. She was awesome today, and uh, she started off with a blast. She was talking about STEM, and I think STEM is a very important uh, thing that everyone needs to know about, everyone needs to be part of. And if you've got uh, young learners, if you're in primary school, you're in secondary school, you're a teacher there, you're an, an educator, you're even a parent. Yeah, it's important that you get on with um, the Lena Bakshi uh, presentation. It was really, really awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we, we are going to uh, be having, um, we're, we're, we're trying to like resolve the uh, next presenter. So you're going to have some time with me. Then we, we've had Simeon Adebola and Simeon was talking about learning and doing with coding and robotics. And she did uh, a powerful presentation that if you ever have a need to be in, uh, you to know about, uh, AI, how the, the beginnings of the machine learning, um, all, the, all the stuff that we're having that is dominating and disrupting the, the, both the business and the educational world right now, then you're supposed to check on uh, Simeon Adebola's uh, presentation. It was really, really awesome. And he was able to relate that, you know, going back to scratch, uh, I had names like Simon Papa, uh, uh, the, the, le the, le the legendary uh, Mitch Resnick, uh, the professor, uh, professor of the media uh, of lifelong kindergarten group at the me uh, Media Labs at MIT, and a whole lot more. Their researches have made a whole lot of difference in how children learn. 
uh, coding to learn and then to code and now uh, the other of the day. And if you have not checked on the Scratch uh, programming software, uh, it's a it's, uh, good time for you to uh, check on that Scratch programming uh, software. And Simeon is going to be back uh, later on today, uh, later on in, in, uh, within our 24 hours and talking about a, another wonderful project. I, I know you wouldn't want to miss it. So uh, now, uh, yeah, while there, there's still some little bit of issue at backstage, uh, Karen is trying to resolve that. Uh, we are a lot of other speakers that are going to be speaking as we get on in. Yeah, uh, you, you've just seen Fanny Passports. She's coming powerfully in a couple. Of, it, in fact, Fanny Passports is going to be speaking on the hour next after this. So I bet you don't want to miss Fanny. Yeah, and you can actually see a whole lot of host of speakers that we have today. A whole lot of them are actually getting ready while some are just oh, having a sound sleep and say, okay, yeah, I'm going to be ready and I'm going to dish a very fantastic one today. So, but uh, whatever it is, uh, yeah, we, we just started in a uh, this just third hour of digital conference and yeah, we've been having a fantastic one uh, uh, at the back, uh, backstage here. So many things are coming up and there are new developments we will start to update you. So now we shared a link and uh, I think I'm going to share the link with us right now. Uh, just a second. I'm going to be sharing the link with us so that we'll be able to see uh, the updates of the presentations that we're having and the direct links to those presentations. Uh, uh, in a moment, you're going to have it. Yeah, you're going to have it in a moment. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be sharing the link for us to see. Uh, OK, so. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, I think you should be able to pick this up. I guess you should be able to do that. Yeah, so if, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're if you on YouTube as well, you should be able to pick up the link. So now, and uh, I'm going to still say uh, something uh, more. And uh, if you have not, uh, Okay, if you're watching this and you have not registered, uh, I think you, you need to do that because um, we're going to still be having some additional information that will be passing across to all registered users. So uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be sharing the registration link to us uh, shortly. Don't forget, you're still on to the Teachers and Conference, 24-hour online global conference. Well, a whole lot of people were looking at it that, yeah, how do we want to achieve 24-hour online conference? I even had some questions about people say, yeah, what's the possibility of that? And especially now that it is for educators, uh, it's it's a, a whole lot and people kind of like, yeah, how would that be achieved? But we are bringing it to, across to you, courtesy of technology, uh, yeah, in, in everything, relatively everything that we're talking about in life. Uh, yeah, and uh, with the pandemic, what the pandemic has actually done to us, that it's actually made us to shift our focus to other opportunities that we have not been looking at over the years. And 
that's that's why uh, uh, yeah, it's very very important that you start to think or uh, think uh, with technology, uh, give it some space, allow disruption period to come up. Yeah, and I have uh, Karen coming up right now. Karen, how uh, how are you doing? Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. I'm even better now that I can talk. Oh, good. I'm having a <laughs> fabulous time. Fabulous. Oh, my goodness. That's it. So uh, you, were, you were at the Anissa Jones um, session. So can you tell us something about it? Yes. Uh, Anissa talked about, she talked about how professional development changed uh, for, for her down in Australia. And um, it was really interesting to hear her perspective on uh, planning professional development and then getting all ready. You see, because COVID-19 hit, well, they had just a terrible year. They had very bad fires and then they had hail and, and uh, they over their winter time and it was very bad storms. And then there, um, they also had uh, uh, COVID-19. So they were getting just ready, just gathering themselves to get back. And then they all had to teach online. So mm. she was talking about those struggles, but also how she developed, um, uh, she's, she's teaching the eight ways of Aboriginal learning. And she's using that in her instruction with teachers and allowing them to learn um, uh, in the Aboriginal way and uh, the way of indigenous peoples. And it's really fascinating. So, uh, uh, I'm really, I'm really glad I got to be a part of that presentation, and that yes. will be on the Teachathon website. Okay, yeah. So, um, so I'm talking ready. about yeah, talking about uh, indigenous ways of learning. Um, uh, with COVID and everybody had to go back to go back to the schools and lockdown. How do you think for uh, because this is a global conference? You expect that. We have both those that the boast of high bandwidth and those ones that really don't have the bandwidth and the internet infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, very much. Right. So what what would you say that how do people tend to look back into what they have to be able to like do something like what Anissa was talking about? Um, well, there, you know, I, uh, a lot of the teaching is uh, what what we call in America. Um, we used to call English as a second language where you use uh, nonverbal and you use visible things to teach language and you use um, art and uh, movement and pausing and, and uh, uh, quietness and reflection. And so all those things are um, uh, part of that culture. And so she uses that in to help her instruction and helps teachers. She does, uh, professional development with in all over the states down there um, just teaching them how to use those skills and to uh, use the books that are available to teach students how, how better to learn and also how for teachers how to teach students of all kinds so it's it's fabulous yeah so um, would you talk to us about um the, the sessions that we have ahead of us uh, today are the Teton Conference and how amazing the speakers that we have are going to be. Oh, yes. Um, well, I, I was really excited because it uh, the topics that we have are not, they're not all the same kind. They're uh, kind of educational. It's not your typical education conference because we've had... Um, uh, talking already okay. about scrap uh, coding and um, also, um, like I said, Aboriginal learning and professional development. Most of you stay. And also um, art. We're going to talk about art and how teachers have used art during the pandemic and um, lots of social and emotional learning. And, um, you know, it, Education has changed. It's already changing. And it's uh, teachers are the most creative people on earth, I think. And they figured out a way how to still teach those students. And um, they've been wonderful and generous enough to share that with us. So I'm just very happy 
to be here. Uh, I do have the video that we can play um, from uh, Ms. Wake's staff. Uh, if I was just talking and talking away and I think I got dropped. Let's see if I can get back. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so do you have the video now? Yes. Um, did I get Did I get dropped? Can yeah, you, you, you can. You, you can play it right now. Okay. Yes. Yes, I have the video, but okay. I don't have the controls. Where are the controls? Yeah, uh, share screen. There we are. Okay. Um, yeah, no, seriously, I lost the whole window. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. There she is. And... Share audio? Uh, no, I forgot that, of course. Of course, I forgot uh, that. Uh, okay, so you have to do that one more yep. time. One more time. Okay. Oh. supposed to stop sharing. Yep. Get up back. And, yeah. There we go. There's tips share screen, share audio. That one. That one. And let's cross our fingers. Okay. Is that coming through the system? Uh, not yet. It's not really very good. How about the volumes? Volume. Yeah. yeah, it it doesn't. You, you have not shared audio yet because it's not bringing on the uh, the, sp the speaker sound. All right. Uh, the speaker again. sound. So, so go right one more time. So stop sharing. Or oh, would you use Chrome tab? It's possible. Uh, yes. One second. Because I downloaded it and then opened it from a different locations. Okay, okay. Just drag it into the Chrome. You'll be able to play that. Does that just okay. randomly go off? <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we're something about technology. Always. Yeah, so then, uh, uh, and you seem to have a very uh, great time. Uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's coming up. So let's let's hope it's plays right now. Better. No, no, hearing the sound yet. It still doesn't have that sound on, so I'm wondering what's happening. Yeah, d d okay, it's it's downloaded to your system, so it's not on a link. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Third time this tar third time is the charm, right? <laughs> Time. <laughs>
So in order to become digital citizens, we must digitize ourselves. So here is my analog Karen on the left hand side. And then there is digital Karen. And so notice how I'm kind of in a similar pose. But if um, so, the first digital tool I'm going to share with you so that you can help share digitizing your students is called Bitmoji. And Bitmoji actually is a website, and I'll have all these resources at the end, but it's also an extension. And the coolest thing about Bitmoji that, that I just learned, actually, is that you once you get the extension, if you're in Chrome, you click on it, and you can just drag it down like this little um, GIF image on the right-hand side. You just drag the image down and you can crop it just like any other image or, or um, photograph that you might have. So you just drag and drop onto your project. So we have to connect with students where they are and then we extend and we take students to where we want them to be. So the first things we need to do is we need to ask students, where have you lived? And what do you see when you look around? So think about a map of the world. And uh, we live in increasingly international uh, homes. So let's let's see. Let's go ahead and um, if you have a um, if you have another tab that you can click on on your computer, uh, I can John. If you would drop that. Uh, link or type it into the the chat that would be fabulous if not you can actually just type this into your browser which is uh https colon slash slash bitly slash via all caps via 20 spark and the capital uh, s spark that will get you to a jamboard and a jamboard is an interactive whiteboard there's no charge for it. It comes with the Google Apps, uh, G Suite of Apps. And it's a wonderful place for you to look at. And the first activity is to put a little dot or a post-it note on the left-hand side of your screen is a toolbar and you, there's a pen. You can put a dot or a circle or write your name or whatever where you live, what country you live. So that's where we start at where we are. And we appreciate the things that we have here. So now let's extend to where we want to be. So where, if you could live anywhere in the world, think a minute, what country would you like to live in? And at the top of your screen, when you're looking at that Jamboard, there's a carrot that goes to the right. And you'll see like one of three or two of three. We're going to go to number uh, jam number two by just clicking and going to the right. And those are the arrows that are at the top. In the second picture, I want you to put a dot or sticky note um, where you want to live or visit in the future. So we're going to think, oh, where's an exotic place? This somewhere. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be exotic, actually. I would like to live in an exotic place, but um, somewhere different from where I live now. But you may not. You may just want to live across the street. Who knows? But if you were, and now think about if you were to become a citizen there, what are some things you would have to learn? Say you got a chance to go to that exotic place. What would you have to, what are some things that you would have to learn? So we're going to write this in the chat now. Think about things you would have to learn if you lived in a foreign land. You wanted to be there. What would we have to learn? So some of the things we might write are, language we might have to learn um, the foods foods might be different than what we're used to we might have to learn uh, the rules and the laws their school systems we might have to learn a new job because they may not have the same jobs if the environment's different if the weather's different so there are a lot of things we'll have to learn when we get into our new uh new place in the uh, country, in the world. So now that we're digitized, we must think about our lives and our personalities and our digital uh, citizenship, okay? So we're going to have to be internet smart. And one way to be internet smart is to be a positive, 
presence and to think and protect your secrets. And don't assume that people understand exactly what you're talking about because sometimes our words don't convey what we're trying to say and respect others' privacy. If they ask you not to post something or just think before you post about someone else and about yourself, think about what's important and think of your future actions. And so all these things, uh, of course, always we need to be cognizant of that, but students especially, because you know where students learned about technology? Right here. And you know where who taught them? Probably their friends or probably somebody who um, uh, found something cool at school and said, hey, look at this. Look what my phone could do. And then and then they share it that way. But no, friends don't sit down and say, let's be good digital citizens, do they? Okay, so on the right-hand side, there's a smart badge, and um, you'll get this, this presentation, and uh, you can use those badges to reward your students when they do activities that, that cause them to be internet smart. Internet strong. Internet strong means creating a strong password, and what I love about this uh, curriculum, and this uh, whole curriculum is called Applied Digital Skills, and it's offered for free by Google, and you don't even have to have a Google account. You can still access the lessons. So create a strong password and then switch it up. Switch your password about every three months and um, uh, get creative with it. And the cool thing about this lesson and this section of the content area is that you're shown how to create a strong password by creating a passphrase and they define what a phrase is. For example, my past phrase may be, um, my, uh, I ate an apple today. You know, I ate, I could use the number eight, and capital N, apple, you know, today, or something like that with a number two in it. So that, that's one way to create a past phrase. Now you can remember, I ate an apple today, and that would help you remember your password. Now, no one in the world is going to think that I have a password with all kinds of capitals and A's and numbers and things like that because I used a passphrase. So it's a brilliant way to teach the kids that they do need to have strong passwords, but then they show them how to do it. Okay. Um, and there's another badge for you. And all the badges are at the end. So be internet alert it means don't fall for scams and uh, use secure websites. Pay attention and uh, it can happen to everyone. And another thing we need to show our students is that um, we make mistakes too. And it's all right. It's all right if we make mistakes because that's how we learn. And, and we want to encourage them that if they do feel like, uh, well, if they said, shared their password with somebody or they clicked on a link that was bad and now they think they got some kind of virus we need to say it's okay that's all right just just tell a trusted adult and that's another thing that's good about this uh, curriculum is that it encourages students to find a trusted adult whether that's their parents their grandma grandpa or their teacher or some adult that can actually help them so um, they can be alert but if they mess up they can go to a trusted adult. And that way students aren't so isolated because sometimes in the digital world, students are isolated. Even parents, even the grownups feel isolated in this uh, digital world too. Be internet kind, follow the golden rule, be nice to others because we want them to be nice to us. And I'll love this. It teaches students how to be an upstander and not a bystander. And there are scenarios where Students are given these problems and they are asked to solve the problems in a non-threatening, non-catastrophe way so that um, they could think about the responses before they have to go out in the real world and solve those crazy problems. So the scenario may be one friend tells you a secret about somebody else, should you share it or not? And then the, the idea is that students can talk about this together and somebody might say yes you should share it and someone says say no nah, 
it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I don't care. Or someone says, no, you don't ever share that. So then, then they have those conversations. Students need to be given the opportunity to be able to process in their brains because they're not very good at doing that yet. So we need to give them the opportunity to do that, to show them how to make a good decision and talk about consequences in a non-threatening way. Also be internet brave. Uh, it's okay to stand up and say something. If you see something negative or see something you don't agree with, it's okay to talk about it. Talk with your trusted adult. Talk with your friends. Talk it out. Think about things logically. We need to show students that it's okay to hold the thought in your mind and to think about it. And um, also, if if we decide that it's it's inappropriate, we need to tell a trusted adult or get proof. For example, if someone does something goofy, or something, I'm not going to say goofy, does something bad and we don't think it's right, show your students how to take a screenshot of things because they may get all upset but not have the words to say what they saw. And so show them how to do a screenshot. It's the easiest thing in the world. Or, if, or show them how to take a picture with a phone. Whatever they need to do to be able to get proof and then take that to their trusted adult. And tell them not to be afraid. Um, show them how they cannot be afraid in themselves. It kind of empowers students. And again, the scenarios are beautiful because uh, many times uh, students will be, well, they'll be um, ambushed. You know, we haven't, they haven't had time to process. They haven't had time to think about it. So when you give them a scenario to talk about, then that helps them logically walk through uh, discussions and uh, topics that might be difficult on their own. So assign digital content without Google Classroom. You don't, it's not, it's a Google product, but you don't have to purchase it. And I think that's awesome because not everyone has access to a Gmail account, but you can go to that apply digital skills page. And there's a, a, a tab up there called lessons and you can search through the lessons. You can do all the lessons. Now you can get, you don't get a certificate, but you can still do all the lessons. And um, if you want to assign them to your classroom, if you do use Google Classroom on the right hand side, there's a logo on there with it that you click on and it'll assign it straight to your Google Classroom, even if you're not logged in. So that's pretty awesome. And then um, on the right hand side also, it's a view of what the student would see in Google Classroom. And on the left is what the student would see if they're not in the Google Classroom. Here are all the resources. Bitmoji, there's the Bitmoji website. And remember, there is an extension so that you can drag and drop. Otherwise, all you have to do once you make your Bitmoji is just copy and paste. You can still copy and paste. And that's what everyone's doing with all those uh, uh, crazy uh, animated classrooms. Beautiful, so beautiful works of art. But remember, images take longer to load. So if your students are having trouble with bandwidth, Maybe the full-blown Bitmoji Classroom is not the thing for them. But if, if bandwidth isn't a problem, go for it. And Jamboard, it need, your Google admin will need to add it to all the apps. Um, it's not an extra cost, but it needs to be enabled by your Google admin. And then the Applied Digital Skills Curriculum is there on the left. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, I have a Applied Digital Skills website that I created for a longer training, um, but it's got all kinds of, it's got bits and pieces of lessons, and it also has a curriculum. Uh, I don't have it right here, but it has a curriculum about be internet smart, be internet brave, kind, um, and alert, and all those good things. Um, that's the tip sheet. So you can either print that if you want, or just have the kids rewrite it and have a solemn ceremony about being good digital citizens. All that cool stuff. And the photofunia.com is so much fun. You take your own picture and it masks the the image so that that's where my passport picture was. And, uh, and this last one, there it is. The one on the right, the uh, top secret, my top secret dossier, Global City Citizens Limited. And you can uh, personalize all the stuff. Those are not really my fingerprints but uh, you can personalize everything else 
And then, so thank you. And I love you, Random Citizen. And I hope you join me in Analog Land sometime. Thank you for joining me in Digital Land. Here are all the badges. And um, the uh, this is from this screen is from Slides Mania. And these are directions on how to change the passport on the very first slide. How to change the colors. Like you can get a different color passport, just like real life. And these are all those directions. And then also the badges. If you'll notice, you can get stickers on there. You can have the students go through different lands. And then here's Slides Mania. She, this, this is one person. Her, I think her name is Sharon. I don't know if it says on there. But she is brilliant. And she does awesome templates for websites. So that quickly is 20 minutes worth of digital citizenship. Now, um, I'm going to hop on over to the chat. We have a couple people, a couple people in the audience. Were we able to go to the, I'm going to go ahead and put all those links in there. So the um, Jamboard, where was the jam? Here's our jam board. Okay. And this whole presentation. Is right there. That's the presentation. So if you want to click on there, you're welcome to. Okay, and so when I click on the Jamboard, I'm still sharing. Good. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, this is what Jamboard looks like. And then over here on the left are the pens. You can click a different color pen, and you can do a fat pen or a skinny pen. And you can draw. I don't want to draw all over the map, but you can draw if you want. But what I really love are these, these sticky notes. Because I can say, hello world, and I can change the color of my sticky note. And I can make it small. So if I wanted to live in Canada, I could put my, my sticky note over Canada. And uh, that's, it's a lot of fun. And then you can also draw circles. Here's the next one. This is one place where I might want to live. Let's say I want to live in Brazil. I can draw a circle. And if I click that, I can duplicate it or delete it or order it. And up here at the top, every, every time you click on it, those tools change at the top. So right now it's white, but I can make it transparent. And then that's how you make it look like it's uh, circling something on the map. And I can also change the background. I can clear the frame. But let's say I want to change the outline of the map, of the circle on the map to be red. I can do that. The tricky thing is about Jamboard, and I, it took me a while to learn this, if you click right, it'll just keep adding the jams, adding the jams. But you can delete it by clicking the down arrow, right, or the little down triangle, and then delete. You can also duplicate. So if you have some uh, some jams that you want to use for your um, class, maybe make one jam for each student, you can certainly do that. Okay, well, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, people, but I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, little quick substitute teacher digital citizenship. I'm going to let you go back to the schedule. Let me see who's coming next. That's not my schedule. Okay. That means, I think that's my timer. It's time to go. Okay. Yeah, cool. So that, that, that's a very good one, Karen. Thank you. Yeah, and I know. Um, that was a quick one. Uh, uh, it's always a teacher. And you kind of always 
having something to pitch at every point in time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we have Ali uh, Fanny Passport. Okay. Yeah, uh, so I mean, she's going to uh, doing the panel discussion. Okay. Uh, yeah, on top of the hour, creating and sustaining motivation and empowerment. Uh, we tend to have a lot of empathy se sessions right now. Okay. Uh, for this conference, because actually teachers need empathy. Yes. Uh, they are actually going through a whole lot right now. What do you think, uh, Karen? I, I agree. It's it's very stressful to feel like uh, the things that you think are right and that you've been doing f for a while and you think you're going to teach a certain way and then all of a sudden the circumstances change. It's very stressful. So I think uh, if we need to give each other grace as much as possible. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can always join uh, the session. Talk to our... Uh, Creating a sustaining motiv motivation and impact and empowerment uh, by finding passports on the top of the heart. So, uh, okay. in 10 minutes, we're going to start that session. Okay. I hope you would join us. And uh, if, if you don't have the link yet, I've actually shared it and you can actually go back, stop your video, and uh, check the link to pick it up. So, and okay. we still have. A whole lot of people coming up today. All right. So, uh, on the picture that you're seeing, Karen, who do you really, who do you want to uh, hold on to and say, yeah, I'm going to listen to this person? You know, I'm really looking forward to um, Dr. Desiree Alexander. Woo! Yeah. Alexander. Yes. Yeah. So can, can you tell us something about her? Huh? It's her the the title is intriguing. It's called Pick Up Your Mat and Walk. Wow. I love so, that. I love that wow. session title. Wow. Wow. Cool. So so it's something we're going to look forward to. So I'm actually looking forward to I have a whole lot of sessions I'm looking forward to right now. Yeah. Uh, um I uh, uh, teach meet by Max Amont. Oh, I've yeah. been part of teach meet before, and it's really, really fantastic. So I really want to learn about the journey. What's the next thing that's happening with teach meet and all that? And yeah. also, Jenny, she wants to talk about Lucy and how that turned out to be a learning uh, project yeah. for her. And uh, for some of us, we've been part of that journey and we've seen how things have actually been. So it's, it's yeah. a wonderful thing. And then our Dr. Nathan Langrad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he for, is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I'm looking for some of the wonderful sessions that. So, but right now we have Fanny Passport. She's going to be uh, having a panel. I, I, I think uh, she's going to have a couple of people on the panel. Uh-huh. And I think I'm going to hop in, too, if she needs oh. me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, me. so you, you, you're all in for everybody today. I am. To... I'm all in. That's my nickname right there. <laughs> That's very interesting. So so let's let's look out for a uh, funny okay. passport shortly. So... Uh, you, you can turn in, and uh, shortly we're going to be bringing uh, this, uh, the link for or the reg uh, for all the sessions is going to be on teacherturnnetwork.com/slash p. You're going to see uh, all the presentations there. So we're going to and we're going to over on it on our cover page. We call it cover page or the landing page. So. It, uh, in a couple of minutes, you're going to see um, all the sessions there, and then you'll be able to plug in into whatever sessions we, uh, you want to attend. And we'll be updating as it goes on. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we are human, and uh, for one reason or the other, someone might uh, miss 
uh, people have missed their flight before. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So someone someone actually might miss the session for one thing or oh, what well, I forgot. Like Lena was saying, yeah, she she thought, yeah, I'm going to work on my presentation on texting, and then whoo, texting came, and she was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> the day, is yeah, here. this. The day is here, and she had to just jump on it and do a whole lot of things, and our, our session was really, really wonderful. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I, I think we should we should start to move to the next room right now. Okay. All right. So, Thank you. Well, Bye. Bye. So we will be going for uh, the session uh, finding passports shortly. So you join us, look out for the link, and then um, the link is going to be uh, something very easy for you to pick up. But look out for the link and uh, let's, uh, let's get on uh, to some business of the day, talking about uh, empowerment, teacher empowerment. Let me give us... Yeah, creating and sustaining motivation. Uh, it's very important in this kind of situation that you need to mo be motivated and keep being motivated. So how do you get that done? So we're going to see that. Uh, or Fanny is going to tell us a whole lot more about that. So uh, see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.